botanic gardens. Many countries and some large cities go to great lengths to create these grand outdoor spaces containing a lot of different plants from all over the world. These spaces are used for public enjoyment, for education, and also for botanic research. Now, I love visiting botanical gardens whenever I have the opportunity. And last summer, I visited the Royal Botanical Gardens of Ontario, Canada. And in this video, I will share my tour of two of their lovely gardens, the Flower Garden and the Mediterranean Garden. Now, I am sure you'll be intrigued to find out that many of the plants that you may be familiar with in your garden are catalogued as Mediterranean climate plants. So please stay tuned and you'll be able to figure out which ones we're talking about. Well, I'm standing in our front garden, which, as you can imagine, we are attempting to create very mini, mini botanic gardens. But for this video, I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy our tour of two gardens at the Royal Botanical Gardens of Ontario, Canada. Ta-da! I've just been beamed up to Henry Park, which is that section of the botanic gardens that is famous for roses, as well as other flowering plants. The approach to the park is rather inviting, don't you think? Look at those lovely uh, overhanging trees providing that shade, as well as the benches that really beckon you to come and pause a while and appreciate your surroundings. There's artistic combinations of both um, plants as well as ornaments, which really is what gardening is all about. As we enter the flower garden area, we are greeted by a really spectacular water display. Let's just pause a while to appreciate this display. There's a tea house in the distance that beckons us, but mm -hmm, not as yet. Our real purpose here is to wander around the many, many rose beds, appreciate the different colors, appreciate the other flowering plants that are interspersed among the roses. I just like to point out that 2022 was a rather hot, dry year, and the blooms are not as spectacular as they were in previous years. But the management here, you can see that they're taking all steps, including a very thick mulch to preserve as much of the soil moisture and to keep the displays going for our enjoyment. Next, we'll head to the relatively protected environment of the Mediterranean Garden. That's because it's housed in a really large enclosed glass house. Here we are at the entry level of the Mediterranean Garden. And as you can see, it's rather hazy in this glass house. As a reminder, a Mediterranean climate consists of warm, wet winters and hot, dry summers. This occurs in countries in the Mediterranean area, of course, as well as in other regions, such as parts of California, Chile, South Africa, and Southwest Australia. Very nice winding pathways, the trees. You could see that these plants have been here quite a while. They are looking as if they are in their natural habitat. Let us start at this end of the display. And what greets us is this very, very nice variegated bougainvillea. Notice the keyhole which provides an enticing view into the middle area of the display that kind of builds up the excitement to find out what's around the corner but we don't want to get there too fast so let's uh, continue to check out some of the plants these small shrubs at the bottom of the trellis are quite familiar 
there the bronze shrimp very nicely accentuating the trellis and here are some citrus plants the first one up is a calamondi a rather small but i guess growing in a container and indoors but it's looking fairly healthy i see one or two small fruits and quite a few flowers so it augurs well for the next crop the next set of citrus plants have fruits on them that remind me of rough lemon but let's check the label and yes it is citrus limon ponderosa variety and you see here a few other citrus plants looking fairly well in their relatively small containers this one is putting on a flush of young leaves and as the camera pans i see one of my favorite plants yeah the amaryllis i can't tell what color that is and i'm not seeing a label and moving on here is a very familiar coffee plant coffee arabica originally from ethiopia and here it is there are berries ready to be harvested i would hope that they make coffee from these berries and here's an interesting label let's read it it says that there are small paper sachets or small piles of debris on the leaves of this coffee plant and others which release helpful predatory insects into the garden it is part of the integrated pest management plans that help to reduce the reliance on chemical controls no that's very interesting as we continue our tour here is a plant that is familiar the weeping bottle brush it says it's a native of eastern australia i have one in my garden <laughs> but no way is it as tall as this one look at it here are three small oxalis plants growing in the cracks of the pavement pretty aren't they oxalis occurs as a display elsewhere in the garden but here they are growing as weeds and here's a eucalyptus tree which is native to south australia and as this sign tells us the aborigines of australia were the first to distill eucalyptus oil and use it to treat pain congestion fever and colds and coming up we have the bird of paradise which this sign identifies as a true mediterranean plant here is a magnolia tree this is a very ancient plant species and it's valued for its large fragrant flowers here are the purple flowers but they also come in white pink or yellow there are also several displays of succulent plants this one is a species of aloe it's aloe arborescence and this is sedum otherwise called bow's tail a giant fig tree look at the size relative to my height and it has on young figs here's another iconic mediterranean plant the olive let's see what's written on the sign olives were one of the first domesticated plants it's valuable for fruit oil and timber and as it turns out it's one of the most extensively cultivated crops and here i am trying to reach a pomegranate not a chance the fruits are way up at the top of this tree another mediterranean favorite the passion fruit
which trails very nicely over this wall and this is what the lovely passion fruit flower looks like. This is Clivia miniata. I have it in my garden. And of course, a very familiar hydrangea and I wish I had this type in my garden. This is a good place for us to end our tour of the plants in the Mediterranean garden. But before I go, I'd just like to point out that the two gardens that we visited today are only a tiny portion of this really large botanical garden. This botanical garden occupies an area of approximately 2,700 acres. A lot of it is natural wooded area, but 300 acres of this is cultivated gardens. We also visited the rather extensive kitchen garden displays and we will share this with you in a subsequent video. This brings me to the end of the tour of those two fabulous gardens at the Royal Botanical Gardens, Ontario, Canada. We hope you liked it and that you expanded your knowledge of some of the plants that we have around us that we did not know were Mediterranean climate plants. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up share it with your friends and if you have not subscribed already we would really appreciate your taking the time to do so in that way you will not miss any of the videos that we will upload on a weekly basis so until the next video i'm thelma standing in the calyx garden saying thanks for watching and bye bye